Hey everyone, Bradley Jack Design here, and with this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Gradient Map Adjustments layer. This adjustment can be found in two spots. First, you can go to Image, Adjustments, Gradient Map, or you can just click the last bottom right icon in the Adjustments panel. This will create a new adjustment layer of a gradient map. To start off, this is how Adobe defines a gradient map. The gradient map adjustment maps the equivalent grayscale range of an image to the colors of a specified gradient fill. If you specify a two color gradient fill, for example, the shadows in the images are mapped to one of the endpoint colors of the gradient fill. Highlights are mapped to the other endpoint color. The midtones are mapped to the gradations between. Essentially, the color on the left represents black or dark tints, and the color on the right represents white or light tints. Key graphics that I've created in which I know a gradient map is a big aspect of the design and are most recognizable are my Kyrie Irving graphic, Ninja, Julius Peppers, Michael Thomas, and my Eric Berry graphic. And essentially anytime I made someone's skin black and white or wanted a low contrasting background for a design. There are many ways to use the gradient map filter. Here are just a few things you can do using it. You can turn something black or white, you can create a duotone image, you can create a color cast over your design using specific team colors, you can change the color of any object including jerseys, you can add different colors to lighting effects like flares or light leaks, you can lighten skin tones for better clarity, you can turn skin black or white while maintaining detail, and I'm sure there are plenty more. What we're going to focus on for this video are using gradient maps to manipulate skin color, both making skin black and white and as well as making it a different color, manipulating flares and other lighting effects, changing the color of someone's uniform, and using gradient maps to add a color cast to your whole design. First let's use a gradient map to change some skin color. Let's start with making skin black and white. This is a great technique to add color contrast to your designs. It's a very popular look to have skin be black and white and the jersey be its original color. It's very simple to make the skin black and white, but I'll show you how to adjust settings in order to keep detail in the original image and change the lightness or darkness of skin in order to maintain the best detail. So take this photo we have here of Saquon. Let's say we wanna make the skin of Saquon black and white. What we can do is we can go up to the adjustments panel and create a gradient map. Now this is just the default colors that I had selected, but we're gonna to go to my default black and white gradient map, which I have here, which you can see has five different markers on it. It has black at 0%. At 25%, it actually has a tint of 25% or brightness of 25%. Same with 50%, 75%, and then white. So we have the gradient map. I'm gonna hold down the option key and apply it to only the Saquon layer here. And what we can do is if I zoom in here, we can tweak this gradient map by moving the inside gray selections and we can lighten his skin up a bit and create some more contrast with the image. So if we wanna make sure we can still see his face, we can go ahead and tweak these around. So I'm gonna hit okay. This is what it looks like before, this is after. Um, you can go in and make additions, additional tweaks to it. So maybe we want this to be a little bit darker for a little more contrast, that looks a little bit better. Then all we have to do is just mask out this mask from where his skin is. And this is actually the opposite of what I'm gonna be doing. So actually I'm gonna invert the selection. So we're gonna mask out everything except for his skin. Now you can see if you can get a little sloppy with it on the white parts because it's black and white anyway, you're not going to notice it. Just make sure you do a good job of actually going around and masking out his arm and his face and wherever skin's being shown. Make sure you don't forget the legs or like the knees, which are sometimes available to be seen. Uh, let me see in this image. Yeah, so his knee here. You know, I'm just going to go in here and we're going to do this real quick, just as an explanation. Mask, 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 come down here, mask, 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 mask. You can always hit X to invert your brush selection to easily paint back in colors that shouldn't be black and white. And we'll go to his face real quick and we'll mask this out. 
This is what I do on all my black and white images when I want to make someone's skin black and white. Go in, tweak the middle sliders of the gray in order to make it black and white. If you find a photo you like but their face is really dark or covered, this is a good way of brightening up their face so you can actually see it instead of it being super, super dark. So here we go. Black and white skin. This is before, this is after. It just really makes his jersey pop a lot on this image itself. So that's one way to use a gradient map to make um, skin black and white. Uh, what we can also do is make his skin a, any color we want. So since we already have this gradient map selected, or it's already masked out, we can make his skin go from any color to any color. So let's say we want to make it go from black or from blue to red. Now it looks terrible, mainly because we want to make sure we still have white and black on the ends because that hypothetically would be what the true color would be. Now this looks terrible. What I'm going to do is just make it blue. So I'm going to click over here in the lighter areas and select a blue color. So here, now he looks like Violet Beauregard from Willy Wonka and we made his skin blue. Now this looks terrible, but this is just showing you how you can go about adding a gradient map to change the color of someone's skin. I did this in my Kyrie Irving graphic. Um, it works well for teams that have a dark color and a light color. So let's say we wanted to do like a, like a dark Lakers purple and then a lighter Lakers gold color. So you can see if we move the color over here because this is brighter. This looks a little bit better now. If this was a Lakers graphic, it might look a little bit better. Um, the green actually looked pretty well for my Kyrie Irving graphic. So if we make this a really dark green and adjust the sliders accordingly, somewhere here or there, we can make his skin go from green to yellow to white. Just make sure you have the white and black in there. You can also make the white, say, maybe a really, really light tint of yellow if you don't think it looks good. You can't really tell in this one here because there aren't many highlights on it. So that's one way of using a gradient map is to changing the skin color of someone regardless of color. Just make sure your darker colors are over here on the left and your lighter colors are over here on the right. I'm gonna go back to just this default one so it's gray so it doesn't look weird. Another thing we can use gradient maps for is changing colors of anything. So you can use the same principles um, and apply it to whatever you want. So let's say we want to make this grass a different color. So I can turn on this gradient map. You can see the colors I have selected here as foreground and background are dark blue and red. Those are just sort of some colors I took from Saquon here. So I'm going to change this color to blue. Of course it didn't work. If you have your mask selected and not the actual gradient map, it's going to only pick uh, black and white color. So you want to make sure you have the gradient map selected, not the mask. So now if I go up here and click on this red and change it to a lighter blue, it actually shows up. I'm going to put back the white and black that we have because we want this to be realistic and realistically there would be white and black in the grass itself. And then I can make some tweaks and adjustments to these, move them around until you think it looks good. I'm actually going to make this, I'm actually going to get rid of this white and see what it looks like. See, now it looks kind of cool. Let me move this over. There you go. So now the, now the grass is blue. So if you want to change the color of grass, you can do that. Uh, color of anything, really. So this instance, it's just the grass. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could mask out this top area here so it's a little more realistic. You know, maybe I grab a soft brush and go in here and only have the green of the grass be blue. So there, now we've got blue grass for Saquon to run on, great. Uh, now let's say you wanted to apply this to his jersey. You can go up, go to the adjustments, add a gradient map. And what I generally do if I wanna change the color of something is, you know, we, we set our black tones that we have. Let's say we wanna make his jersey red. So we're gonna put white on here to make it realistic. And then we're gonna just drag the red over to this area here. Now you can see the further we drag it, the more red it becomes. So there, that's that's red. I'm gonna invert the selection by holding uh, Command I, and I can go in here then and paint his jersey back in. Now I've got the wrong thing selected, so let me select the right one. 
So we can do this and you can see we can paint his jersey red. Now you want to go in and you know make sure you go in and paint correctly. You know don't have all these overlays. I'd use a, a harder brush, not a soft brush. Uh, I probably wouldn't paint on the numbers here so you can get rid of the numbers. Paint off that. Don't paint off the logo. You know, but this is just an example. You can change jersey colors to whatever you want. Just make sure you've got black on the left, white on the right. And then normally the color is going to be over here. So let's say we want to make his jersey green. We can make it green. We can make it blue. We can make it this. What is this? We can make it purple. We can make it disgusting yellow. We can make it a dark orange. Whatever you want to do. That's how I would go about changing the color of something. Uh, just make sure you have black and white so it's realistic. So I'm going to get rid of that because it looks terrible. And we're going to come back over here and we're going to apply this to a flare. So here I have this flare. Uh, I have a levels layer on it to get rid of the edges. I'm going to set that to select, not select, screen. So I'm going to move it up to just like a random spot on him. So this is how you can change colors of flares using a gradient map. You, Again, just like we did, go to gradient map. You want to make sure you have black on the left. So we've got black over here. And that's because we want to make sure that the black is transparent. And let's see what happens if we put white up here. So that gives us a nice spot highlight in there. And I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to hold down the Option key to apply it only to this flare. So now look, we've got a nice red and blue flare for the Giants colors for this flare. Now this is what I did with my Eric Berry graphic. Um, I had them going from, I believe, a red to a yellow color up here. Uh, I guess it's a little more orange. That color looks dumb. Like that. And then maybe move this over to lessen it up a bit. So we have a more natural sort of fiery uh, gradient map on top of it. Now you want to make sure that the lighter colors are on the right. If you have the lighter colors on the left, you can see it looks weird like this. It doesn't look natural. Make sure the light colors are on the right and the darker colors are on the left. You know, I hypothetically would probably make this a little darker. So it looks a little bit more natural. So that's how you can change a flare color to whatever you want. Now you can also set this to hue um, or color, but it's going to affect the layer below it a little bit more. Color normally works pretty well, but you can see normal looks just as fine as well. So that's how you can change a flare. And we can do the same thing with a light leak. So I've got this big highlight area coming in from the top left. I've got a levels layer on it to get rid of some of this um, stuff in the bottom right hand corner to make sure there's actual black on it. So I'm going to set this to screen, not light and screen. Pretty much, they're very similar, but this is what I want to use. I want to use screen. Now I can go to adjustments, gradient map. Let's keep this one red and blue like we have. So let me put my white on here. Let me put my black on here. And you can tweak the adjustments. You can see the more the red goes over, the darker it gets. The more red moves over here, the lighter it is. I'm going to move the black or the blue over a bit hit okay it looks weird because it's applying to everything so i'm gonna hold down the option key and only apply it to that flare so that looks better so we've got this flare coming over on top of this overall graphic that we have here now one thing you can do let me get rid of these lighting effects is you can just create a color cast on top of this image which is another use for gradient maps that i use so i'm just going to go to adjustments create a gradient map actually no i like this gradient map here so i'm going to turn it back on and I'm going to apply it to the whole graphic. I'm going to move the, the blue all the way over here and move this over and hit OK. Actually, I need to get rid of this lightly. That looks better. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the, the photo actually looks good. Um, you want a little bit of black and then some red in here. You can play around with it to see what looks good. This looks OK. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to soft light. And I'm going to lower the opacity to 25%. So it's really just giving a color cast over the whole design to make it more red and more blue to align with the colors of the New York Giants. So this is something I use in a lot of my designs just to give an overall color cast to the images. I think it works out pretty well. Um, 
you know, you can play around with the soft light and the opacity. You know, if you make it 50%, it's obviously going to be more apparent. 25 is what I generally use as a rule of thumb. So those are the main things I use gradient maps for. Um, light Lighting in my image to change the photo. Um, the good thing with using gradient maps on flares and lighting is you can find any image you want and then you can always change the color of it. So if you find a really cool yellow flare, but you want to use it in a design where it needs to be blue, you can always just use a gradient map. Um, I also use gradient maps here on this to uh, have natural shadows. So this is just the original image that I have behind Saquon here. I have a gradient map applied to that that is uh, a little more contrasting. I move the white over towards the middle just so the blacks are showing. And basically it allows me to just have a subtle shadow that's more realistic for what Saquon is actually doing here. So the other thing I do with gradient maps, of course, as well, is making skin black and white. I do it, in, this is how I, how I choose to make things black and white. You can easily just use the black and white filter. You can use the desaturation adjustment, the hue and, hue and saturation adjustment in there, whatever you want to use. But uh, I hope this gradient map tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you have any other suggestions on tutorials you want to see, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.